Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Even a tool for disruption and change needs to be kept in check for its own good. With the consistent censoring and banning of conservative voices and social media, I believe it's time to address social media censorship and the need for regulation. It is apparent to all that social media plays a very important role in public life. Twitter is used by politicians to communicate directly with the electorate whilst they spend billions on Facebook's targeted advertising. Alongside that is a new generation of political and social commentators who use YouTube to reach the public and now attract audience numbers mainstream media can only dream of. Their model is simple, make it as easy as possible for anyone anywhere to publish on their platforms. A model so successful, social media now commands much of the advertising that traditional media once relied on. With this comes pressure traditional media have always faced from their advertisers, but it appears their response is to capitulate. Since they have no investment in the content they host, they seem ever ready to remove content and ban users to protect their advertising revenue. Their capitulation has also emboldened activists to call for bans of anyone they disagree with. This is a public concern from a freedom of speech and competition perspective, because these platforms are where most public discussions occur, and also these social media companies tend to buy competitors once they get too big. It is time for decisive regulation, which may preempt the litigation that these social media companies will inevitably face as they continue to restrict their users. Essentially, this would mean that in order to retain the protections afforded to such platforms, social media would not be able to censor anything legal. Alternatively, if they want to take a more active editorial role, they should be treated as publishers and thus be liable for all content published on them. Right now, there's somewhere in between and that is unsustainable. Yeah, I think um, this whole um, social media thing, um, the truth of the matter is that it's been helpful and very unhelpful at the same time. Because as, we, as Uche is saying, everybody has uh, become a publisher and a lot of times you feel quite free and you say things that uh, quite frankly, if you were made to think before you write, because you're not speaking, sorry, on social media unless it's YouTube or something like that, or you post a video, um, you will find that you will definitely have to look back at what you look first at what you're about to write before you write it. Um, but it has opened up a lot. It's it's the reason why so much has uh, happened in the last few years. Politics in Nigeria has changed a bit because of social media. Um, much as there's rigging going on, um, people now fear when they are in trouble on social media, and that's something. I mean, Jonathan was afraid for his um, election, which he lost. Um, um, is Buhari Bu afraid? Bu Buhari, Buhari <laughs> is technically afraid, but uh, I think his uh, zeal to, 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 I don't know, to control elections might be a little different. Or to from, control the social media. Uh, uh, or to control the social media as well, actually, yes, because he did, he tried to do that as well. What uh, your point brought to mind was essentially the whole thing with Trump and Twitter 
Um, and I think that, you know, it's a bit of one, one a dose of one and a dose of the other, because ultimately, the way I see social media functioning at the moment, because you're talking about them functioning as publishers, um, the way I see them functioning is as though if I have a house, I, I reserve the right to dictate how you behave in my house. So let's say Twitter was someone's hotel or house. You come in, they deserve the right. You, the, social media cannot be compared with anything we've had before now because we've not had anything like social media before now. Um, and so I'm trying to say a lot at once. So in a sense, I, I would rather have things remain the way they are simply because the, uh, the appeal for social media is that they're not controllable. And, and it, it would be a farce to believe you can control social media. So uh, my, my problem with the Trump angle is that what do we it's want? Do we want now? Uche. Trump, and then don't focus on Uche. Trump. No, but he's fine. He, but he's the one Uche. fighting it at the moment and spearheading it and saying that they're anti-conservative voices. And if you now give the power to government to control social media, that for me is far more detrimental than to leave things the way they are. Because at the end of the day, it will find its own balance. Social media for me is the only true democracy we have. My, my perspective on the debate is that free, well, first of all, when we when we use the the term free speech, it's a it's a bit of a misnomer. There's actually no such thing as free speech. Yeah, speech is always regulated. That's true. What we call free speech is not really free. Yeah, that's I true. I can't sit down here and shout fire, and then and then cause a panic. I'm not allowed to do no that, way. even yeah. though I have free speech. So, social media, as Ekene said, is in in in, in, Niger in the Nigerian situation is the closest thing we have to a democracy. I, for example. Five or six years ago, a woman who was raped had no voice. Yeah. But now she can come and call out the person on Twitter, and it actually yeah. has some kind of effect. So it's, it's a useful thing to an extent now. However, some people have also, as humans do, found a way to piggyback on that and start bullying other people. That's true. You know, the conservatives did it first, it must be said. Then the liberals have taken over, and they've taken it to another, to another level. So to be perfectly honest, I don't think there's any re ready-made answer to this right now because they, you basically have two sets of bullies mm, who are trying going, to do one another, going against each other yeah. in bad faith. So yeah. what do you do? And, and so for me, for me, like I, I, I want to agree with um, Chuka and Ekene, and then you know you also that um, if I have a house, I should determine you know what you do in my house. And it is not. Um, I also want to disagree with um, Uche that. You know, um, this, um, these comments are not, um, are not um, a sponge, if I'm going to use that word, for advert space. Because also, um, this, the owners of these platforms are also responsible to the society. And if they feel that some of these statements, you know, we cause more harm than good, they can decide to take them off. You know, they owe that responsibility to the society. And so for the fact that, that is why for me, to a very large extent, it is self-regulatory. Uh, not the way we do it here, though, but, you know, it is self -regulatory. We know what, um, what um, you know, um, some of the social media owners went through, you know, on, in the Senate in America in the last dispensation. And so, um, I mean, from, I, I, if I you now give a blanket like regulation... Yeah, of, I was sympathetic of, in the sense that I know that eventually there will be people trying to regulate social media yes. and so on, but... You know, so I sympathize with that angle. But ultimately, like you say, it will self-regulate. I feel, you know, if people, the people themselves will, will help them because it's the people that are dictating what you put on social media. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you, you can't yeah, give a well, blanket regulate because that will be handling a blank check to politicians. And, you know, yeah, like Ekene said, it will be scary. very, very detrimental to democracy. Well, can I just say something? My whole entire point here is that Right now, social media is geared against conservative voices, whether anybody wants to believe that or not. And um, public discourse requires But do we have facts that prove that? Of, do we have facts? Yes, that there are that. facts. There are plenty of facts. And I can list so many conservative voices that have actually been banned just from expressing conservative views. As so that's the reason, that's the problem I have with it. Someone has argued that. The reason video. it seems skewed against conservative, conservative voices is, is because the predominant word. users of social media yes, are not exactly. conservatives. So you, it's almost like a vote. It's almost like a vote. How do they prove that? Well, well, the theme of liberties and regulations are certainly something Uche and I have in common. I'll be taking it from here after the break. <laughs>